The classic American musical, The Music Man, has been a big hit this year with its revival on Broadway and on many regional and local stages across the country. John Yang went to see a novel take on the standard and how art can be a model for a more inclusive society. Note that American Sign Language interpreting was done simultaneous to the interview. That live process may affect the complete accuracy of the English interpretation. This story is part of our arts and health coverage on Canvas. 76 strong the spirited musical numbers, the sly scam, the Midwestern Americana, all the familiar touches of the music man are on display in this production at the only theater center in Maryland. Remember, my friends, what a handful of trumpet players did to the famous fabled walls of Jericho. But take a closer look. This isn't your grandfather's River City. It's envisioned as a place where the deaf and hearing communities live side by side and not being able to hear isn't a barrier. Half the cast is deaf or hard of hearing. There were see-through COVID masks so the non-hearing actors could read lips and facial expressions. American Sign Language interpreters were positioned across the stage. The set was created by a deaf designer with a minimum of stairs so deaf actors don't have to take their eyes off their signing castmates. Oh, and a special lighting system let the non-hearing cast members know when there was a problem. It's going to be a subtitle screen, screen, which will be particularly helpful for those in the balcony. Jason Loweth is in his 10th year as artistic director at Olney, one of the country's leading regional theaters. His philosophy? Let the art lead. We heard there's a pool table in town. The words are almost nonsense, but listening and watching the words be translated into ASL was revelatory. I thought this is a brilliant new way to experience the musical. And then of course, our desire to create a community that is more inclusive by doing theater that is more inclusive you know, it felt like the sky was the limit. He wasn't quite so enthusiastic about six years ago when first approached by James Caverly. So it was akin to Frankenstein's monster, approaching the scientist and saying, make me a new wife, right? <laughs> Same concept, I think, in my pitch. Uh, but I would say that the pitch itself was different. Never mind talking any water till your parents are caught. Deaf from birth, Caverly was working as a carpenter in the theater's scenery shop. After seeing Deaf West Theater's production of Spring Awakening on Broadway, he went to Loweth with an idea. Let's do the music, man. Let's do this. And I don't think that he was totally convinced on the idea at the moment. <laughs> it took a few, maybe three odd years of really pursuing it to convince him. Hey, 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 the music man. Hey, don't forget, the music man. With a capital T, and that rhymes with P, and that stands for P. The Music Man is an American musical theater classic. It tells the story of Harold Hill, a charming traveling salesman in early 20th century Iowa, who dupes townspeople into buying instruments for a non-existent children's band. Marion Peru, the town piano teacher and librarian, sees through him immediately, but then begins to see another side of him. By the time the final song is sung, they've each been transformed by love. What I really wanted was, let's shatter that perception that disabled people can only play roles that are designed or written for disabled people. Oh, we got trouble. We're terrible, terrible trouble. The world that is River City and the Music Man is a perfect choice for that. After testing the idea in a 2019 workshop with a hearing actor as Harold Hill, another twist. What if he was deaf? So if you compare Harold Hill as a hearing man, he's selling musical instruments. That's believable. He doesn't have to work additionally or extra hard to convince people that he could lead a musical band. Now a deaf Harold Hill thundering, thundering. is a different story. He's a guy who really has to turn it up, really become a charmer to be able to convince a community of people that, hey, you should buy these musical instruments because guess what? I can lead a musical band, right? Ha ha. So I think it amplifies the character in a way and you have to really, really ha increase that art of deception. 
it makes Harold Hill not only the ultimate con man in a way, but also what you were saying before, the ultimate salesman of dreams. Absolutely. Absolutely. Caverly, fresh from his breakout role in Hulu's Only Murders in the Building, was cast in the lead role. Artistic director Loeth estimates this production cost about 40% more than a traditional staging. Among the added expenses, the dozen sign language interpreters. A director of artistic sign language, or Dazzle, and two directors, one hearing, one deaf. The deaf director is Sandra May Frank, a star of the 2016 Broadway revival of Spring Awakening. She wanted this staging to be different. I wanted to include American Sign Language, but I didn't want it to be anything that I'd seen done before. We've had deaf and hearing mixed productions in the past, but they're usually shadow hearing individuals voicing for deaf individuals speaking their lines in English. And actors would then sometimes simcom, which is speaking and signing at the same time, speaking English and signing at the same time. And that's very commonly what you see in the world of theater. And with this, I wanted to do something different. So while all musical numbers are sung aloud, some scenes have dialogue only in sign language with supertitles to aid hearing audience members. For Frank and Director of Artistic Sign Language Michelle Banks, who had the same job for this year's Broadway revival of For Colored Girls Who Have Considered Suicide When the Rainbow Is Enough, Watch for telltale signs of corruption. It's that combination of signed and spoken words to tell a story that's both groundbreaking and promising. This is not just a one-off. This is not just for the arts. This can be a part of who we are as a humanity, as a society, that this is how we can interact and engage with each other, to look at one another fully, completely, as our intersectional identities present, how we each navigate the world. Yes, this is beyond theater. You have to attend to the show. You may not know what's coming next, but you're going to constantly have to be attuned. And your eyes, it's going to be a lot to absorb, right? Your eyes are a muscle and they may feel stretched, but that's what the experience should be. Do you hope directors, producers, and casting directors will take something away from this too? Absolutely. Uh, my hope is that through this, this is not the last. If you want my as this diverse cast of actors unites their voices and hands in harmony. The show is to run through July 24th. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm John Yang in Olney, Maryland. What a treat, and let's hope we see a lot more just like it.